Today is another what if video. And for today's video is about the late legendary female rapper Lisa Nicole Lopez, known as Left Eye of 90s R&B group TLC. What would Left Eye's career look like if she never died back on April 25th, 2002 in a car crash in Honduras at the age of 30? TLC were working on their fourth album, 3D. The album was recorded from May 2001 until July 2002. It would be the last album, sadly, that features Left Eye. Sessions came to a halt when Left Eye was working on her second solo album known as Nina, New Identity Non-Applicable. She signed with Suge Knight's Death Row Records in January of 2002 to record the second album. She was recording with David Bowie for the project and Left Eye was trying to get David Bowie involved with the TLC 3D album. Wow, I did not know that. Isn't that something? David Bowie, if he was on a TLC album, holy crap, that would have been something. The Nina album was also to include songs recorded with Brandy's brother Ray J, along with Missy Elliott. After Left Eye's death, Death Row still had plans to complete and release the album, but in October of 2002, the album was canceled for unknown reasons. In 2011, some tracks from the album were uploaded on YouTube featuring artists from Death Row Records. The unreleased songs were also sampled by TLC for their 3D album After She Died. Another track, Two Street for TV, featuring Danny Boy, was released on the soundtrack to the 2003 film Dysfunctional Family. Left Eye did record some raps for 3D before she died. t boz and Chili decided to use three of Left Eye's newly recorded raps from the album Quickie, Girl Talk, and Who's It Gonna Be. The other songs that feature her in it were unreleased acapellas from her Supernova and Nina album sessions. The unreleased vocals were featured on the songs quickie over me and give it to me while it's hot left eyes first and only solo album supernova was released on august 14th 2001 just 11 days before Aaliyah's death and eight months before her death it was supposed to be released on august 16th the day of her father's birthday and grandfather's death but the release date kept pushing back several times the album unfortunately was not released in the u.s due to poor sales overseas Further singles were canceled, but the album was released in other countries. If Left Eye was alive, I think she would have a nice solo career. I could see her doing a collaboration with Eve. I think a Left Eye and Eve collaboration would have been dope. I mean, they are two of the greatest female rappers of all time. Top 10, in my opinion. And no Nicki Minaj, Iggy Azalea, and Cardi B. I'm sorry, but you got to be out of your mind if you think Cardi B, Iggy Azalea, and Nicki Minaj, heck, even Megan The Stallion are in your top 10 greatest female rappers of all time. No, they don't deserve it. It's not even close. Anyways, I think Eve and Left Eye would have been a dope collabo. I could see her collaborating with Tupac. Left Eye collaborated postmoniously with Tupac when she was still alive from one of his postmonious albums until the end of time. There was the song... Let Him Have It remix featuring Left Eye, the song Untouchable from her Supernova album as well. I heard they once dated and she had a thing for him. Now, Left Eye had an on and off relationship with former NFL player Andre Rison. Friends say that Left Eye was in love with both Andre Rison and Tupac. So she was in a love triangle. Left Eye has talked about Tupac during interviews. Tupac, what did he mean to me? It was a little weird being in the presence of Tupac, and um, very similar. Similar to the point where we almost clashed. Both Geminis, and it was almost like four people being in a room. <laughs> you know, and um, uh, I don't know if this has any significance, but um, I was born on an odd day, the 27th, and he was born on the 16th, which equals to seven an odd day, and we were odd. It was very odd when we were together. I got a chance to go to his house um, a few months before he passed on, and um, it was weird. It was a very weird experience because everything that was in my cabinets was in his cabinets. Um, It's, it's down to the seasonings in the kitchen, you know, the types of food that we ate, the pot set, 
the chairs that we sat in. I look at the way his life um, was, and I don't know, I, I see a lot of that in me. Let's see, I think that uh, he had a purpose to serve during his time here. Did we actually lose Tupac? Out of the universe, there's 100%, 85%, you know, they don't know what's going on. 5% do and want to tell everybody, and then there's 10% the who do and they don't want the other 85% to know. I think he was part of that 5%. I think everyone is sent here on a mission, a mission to find themselves and find out what their purpose is and to fulfill it. Now, he accomplished a great deal while he was here, and, um, oh man. I don't know, because there's fate and there's destiny. You know what I'm saying? It's like fate happens and destiny is what you choose for yourself. So the way he left here, um, I don't know which, which one it was, but I just know that if you, if you set a goal and you follow the path you know, that it takes to get to your final destiny, then you may be able to get there if you can recognize the distractions, you know, that you may run into along the way. And I know that there was a lot of things in his life that may have been um, distractions or, um, I don't know, just, just things that just made it a little bit harder for him to climb that ladder, but he still was a very, very strong person. I've been through a lot of things. It's very similar to what he has been through, but he's been through that much more and he's accomplished so much more than I have. So I, I can kind of relate to, you know, him in a sense of uh, being strong and still pushing on and moving forward and trying to follow up with his mission, whatever it may have been. So, But yeah, I do believe he was here on a mission. Tupac gave me lots of advice. Um, the most important advice he gave me was to be 100% real. He said that if I was real with somebody and if they couldn't accept it, then um, it was better to be respected for being real than, you know, to try to lie because to pacify someone else's feelings. So uh, I appreciated that from him and I followed his advice and a lot of people cannot handle someone being 100% real. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I think a lot of people could not handle Tupac. Um, because he was about as real as they come and it's like when you when you get that real it, it, it almost seems like it's gay <laughs> But um, that's the best advice he gave me. I don't know what happened that I didn't get With Pac and he was in Atlanta and Lisa, Lisa told me let me take it one little side She said, okay. she said right, listen if Tupac come and get me, you know that you know me and you would never happen I said I'm, I'm cool. I just got to Atlanta, so I wasn't tripping right but but she loved that man, loved him. Left eye used to kick it with Tupac. Yeah, that, that, that was a man at one time. Ripley's believe it or not. So Get the fuck out of here. Mm. Whoa. Yo, that was best shit ever. I didn't know that Tupac and Left eye used to kick it, but no, I thought everybody knew that. No, niggas it's don't new? know that shit. Oh, okay, well I didn't know that. Like especially not the new nigga. I'm I'm kind of a new nigga. Okay, well yeah. I'm I'm like a new yeah. old nigga yeah. and whatnot. But yeah, I think she used that's to be, she used to be, industry type. She used shit. to be crazy in love with him. I don't think that. I don't think because I think that all the girls knew as far as the group and people like that. I think they we knew. You know, I think it wasn't no secret in the studio. I mean, you don't see no crazy pictures out like that though. Or them. Oh no, no, with no pictures. No, 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 no. Nobody. Nah, nah, that. nah, 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 nah. Yeah. Lisa was a person where on the shrimp, she was the realest, one of the realest chicks I ever met in my life. Spoke like it did what she wanted to do and everything. She was mm. really real. Like she would let you know what time it was. Mm. Period. Oh, you didn't see her cussing niggas out, bro. Yeah, I mean, she, she was cool. She cool. Left Eye made a painting for Tupac back in 1992. And in the back of the painting, she wrote a letter on the back. She wrote a letter that says that 10 years from now, they'll be together. So left I thought that 10 years later into the future, which would be 2002, that they would be together like in a relationship. That's what it sounds like. But as we all know, four years later in 1996, Tupac was gunned down on September 7th and died six days later on Friday the 13th. 
and 10 years later, Left Eye died on April 25th, 2002. And she died six years after Tupac's death. But I guess you could say that 10 years later, they technically ended up being together since they both are now gone. It was rumored that Left Eye and Andre Rison were engaged in 2001 before Left Eye passed away. So it sounds like Left Eye was about to get married. So Left Eye and Tupac, they, uh, they would have been a nice couple. But then again, maybe they didn't think it would work out because probably due to them having too much in common, maybe. But even if they did, I mean, who cares? But here's the thing. Left Eye and Tupac are both cancers. Left Eye was born on May 27th of 1971. Tupac was born June 16th of 1971. They're both talented, legendary rappers. They both were born the same year. Left Eye was a month older than Tupac, so I don't see why it wouldn't work. Not to mention, you could say Left Eye was the female Tupac, because when you hear Left Eye rap in her songs, it's like you kind of hints like a, she's got that Tupac feel when it comes to uh, her rapping. I mean, they both talk about real issues and things in their lives and stuff like that. They're both passionate. I don't think Tupac and Left Eye would have gotten together because Tupac was engaged to Kadida Jones, Quincy Jones's uh, daughter. So they were engaged. So I think Tupac would have gotten married to Kadida. I think they would have been married. And so because of that, I think Left Eye still would have ended up being engaged to Andre Rison, and I think they would have gotten married. Now, if Left Eye was still alive, what about TLC? Would TLC, as of right now in 2020, would they still be making music? Would they still be popular? Would they still be well known today? Well, if Left Eye didn't pass away, TLC obviously would have been able to finish that 3D album with her still being alive. If Left Eye was still alive, TLC would have never disbanded because after Left Eye's death, TLC pretty much disbanded. T Boz and Chili. They always say that they would never replace Left Eye. They would never, ever, ever replace Left Eye. And so t Boz and Chili pretty much moved on and did some solo projects. I think TLC still would have been around in the 2000s for sure. If Left Eye was still alive, I don't think they would have disbanded. They would still be together making great music. They would still be coming out with albums. And even in 2010s, I, I mean, I still think even right now as of 2020, TLC would still be around making music and still having the album tours. They would still be popular and, and they would still be well known and, and they would still have a really big fan base. I mean, not to say that they don't have a big fan base even as of 2020, even after Left Eye's death, but in their fan base, I think, would even still be even bigger. TLC, they're still popular to this day. I mean, people know who, who they are. TLC is still well known, but they would still be popular and still well known if Left Eye was still alive. And I still think Left Eye would have gone solo. Because like I said, T-Boz and Chili have been doing it. So I think Left Eye would have gone solo too. I think she would have had a nice solo career. Um, like I said, if she was still alive, she would have finished that Nina album and probably would have went well. That's what I think what Left Eye's career would have looked like if she didn't pass away on April 25th, 2002. Because as of right now, Left Eye would be what 49 years old she would just be 49 years old she'd be almost 50 like her tupac and biggie all those guys would be almost 50. that's the video you know it sucks that left eye passed away you know it's sad that she died tragically in that car crash that was horrible and it sucks that t boss and chili they had to continue doing their thing without her and, and then they came out with the their last album and I mean, ever since Left Eye's death, I mean, it just hasn't been the same. It's still weird to see t Boz and Chili together, but no Left Eye. TLC is not the same without Left Eye. Just like how Run DMC is not the same without Jam Master J. Like, it's weird seeing Rev Run and DMC together, but there's no Jam Master J. You know what I'm saying? 
or like the Beatles. The Beatles aren't the same without John Lennon and George Harrison. To this day, it's, it's weird to see Paul McCartney and Ringo together. And then I also heard something about Suge Knight talking about claiming he had sex with Left Eye while her and Andre Rison was still together. I hope that's just a rumor. I don't know, because I just don't see Left Eye having sex with Suge Knight. Suge Knight and Left Eye? Uh, I don't know about that. But yeah, this has been the video. Hope you enjoyed. Rest in peace, Left Eye. You are missed. I also think that Left Eye would have been a big influence for upcoming female rappers. I think a lot of girls would look up to Left Eye. I mean, not to say that they don't now, but I'm, I'm just saying. Not to mention, if Left Eye was alive, I don't even think Nicki Minaj and Iggy Azalea and Cardi B and Megan Thee the Stallion would even, you know, exist in the music industry. Or maybe they still will, but they probably would just have their, like, 30 seconds of fame or whatever, then that's it.